Hello everyone, it's Sandra from the Funky Pickle Thrifter. Thank you so very much for joining me today. I'm so glad you're here. Now I happen to be traveling right now, but I have some interesting things that I found and I want to share them with everybody. So I do like to go to pawn stores from time to time and just check out what they have. Sometimes I may buy some real stuff. Usually the gold is overpriced for my wallet, uh, but sometimes I have interesting sterling and so on. And one thing I like to ask the best, though, in certain pawn stores I go to, like this one that I went to yesterday because I'm traveling, I say, would you have any costume jewelry? Now, often, I guess when they buy out lots of jewelry, they have costume jewelry. Now, this one pawn store has three different eBay IDs, hey, just like me, <laughs> uh, that they use. And um, he said he just, they just throw them up in lots. I have to start actually watching their page because I haven't been. But anyway... They showed me some costume jewelry that they haven't yet listed, and I'm really, really glad they did because uh, something I got was really good. So I sort of foolishly picked this one up thinking maybe this one slipped past the goalie, right? It kind of looks real, doesn't it? Anyway, further, I thought that it said Stuller Settings because I know I had a ring once that said Stuller Settings before, which is like an SS. It sort of looked similar. Now, Pawn stores, like their strength, or in business they call it their uh, a core competency, their core competency or strength is checking gold and silver all day, every day. That's what they do really, really well because they have to determine, you know, if somebody's pawning their stuff, what's real and what isn't. So, um, yeah, <laughs> hope springs eternal. I thought, oh, maybe that's real gold, you know, but I don't think it is. Of course, I'm traveling, so I don't have my testing stuff with me or anything like that. Nonetheless, a beautiful ring. By the way, I paid $25 for everything, all right? But something really, really good happened to me. And that really good thing that happened to me is this thing right here. So if you don't know anything about jewelry, if you're a beginner or even if, you not, if you're not, uh, one thing that you always notice when you're looking through jewelry is when it is truly an object of beauty and an object of stunningly high quality as this item is right here. So when I see this and he says, here's here's a bunch of bags of costume jewelry, I pull this out and I go, whoa, something is special. Now this is a Trafari, it's a crown Trafari. I did not know it was a Trafari when I bought it, but it is. This was one that was designed by Alfred Philippe. Alfred Philippe was Trafari's top designer. Now you can notice also, these look like real emeralds and they are uh, sort of invisibly set. You can't see prongs. And now I could tell this wasn't, you know, real or anything, but these diamonds, I mean, everything is just really done beautifully. And furthermore, like for the beginners out there, one thing I try to think of that helps me is like, who could I picture wearing this? You know, I mean, I could see Grace Kelly wearing this, or I could see a woman of means wearing this to a black tie affair. Uh, I could also see somebody wearing this to the ballet or to the opera or something like that. So this item is good. Now I'm going to put a couple of comps on the screen. Now, just because these are some of the asking prices for this item, does that mean what it's worth? Well, that's a very tricky thing to think about. I would argue it doesn't mean that's what it's worth. You could ask a million dollars for something. But what you can derive from these sorts of comps, and I didn't see any solds, is that this is good. And I paid a little more than $2 for this. So this is just a beautiful piece of jewelry, and I will be selling this at some point. But I'm, I'm going to do some further research. I want to just show you something else just so you can get the comparison. I mean, you can see a big, big difference in workmanship and quality here. And this one, I love this one, and it isn't very nicely done. Sorry about the shadow. This isn't like the best setup I have here. I'm just sort of doing it on the fly. Uh, this is super cool. I love this. This looks like plastic or something, but it isn't. It's enameling. So you can see a lot of these stones have yellowed off. You know, this was probably a Woolworths or something like that. And it is um, a little fur clip here. And I think it's adorable. Also, you know, it doesn't have to be fur, right? You could wear it on a coat do anything you want with it. I just loved his feet and his legs and everything. So I thought that was very fun. And then they had this beauty, which I couldn't resist. I usually try not to buy pieces that are missing stones because it's a pain to try to match them. And I don't even know if I have any matching stones, but I just thought this was a really very beautiful item, probably late 30s uh, to the mid 40s on this one, I would guess. But I love that black enameling. 
that I can touch up. I do have some testers paints. Uh, I haven't opened them yet, but <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I'll just sell it as is, but I thought that it was really beautiful and I was happy that I kind of uh, chose this one. I don't know. It kind of speaks to me a little bit. It's pretty, right? Just a few little missing stones. And oh, this one is so pretty. Look at this. Oh, how nice is this? You can probably tell this is gold filled, right? Gold filled has a look. Here's another little gold filled piece I got. This one's nice and heavy too. Isn't that so nice? I think this is a choker. It's very, very small. So you see there it says 1 20th 12 carat. So that's a guarantee that this piece, uh, 1 20th of its weight is 12 karat gold. Now I know there is a way and people do it. Uh, there is a way to melt this down and actually get the gold out, but I guess it's a hard process, a difficult process. But um, if you have big, big lots of gold-filled jewelry, uh, you can actually sell it for the weight, which I've done before with broken pieces. Anyway, but let's uh, let's get back to this little thing right here. How pretty. And look at how nice those stones are. This is in really good condition, I think. I think this one is Vandell, right? It looks like a Vandell. Oh, do I not have my loop? That was dumb because I can't see a thing thing. What does it say? I think that says Vandell, right? So this one is also, there it is. This one is also 1 20th, 12 karat gold filled. I think that's what that says. But this is in really beautiful condition. Now condition is something I always consider. Of course it is. But you know, I'd rather have like a, a Tiffany's item that has a little bit of a scratch on it than a Woolworth's item that's in perfect shape, you know. So everything is always like a grain of salt, right? Take it with a grain of salt. And then I saw this. So this is a picture frame. This is a travel picture frame. There is a tin type in here. So this material is gutta percha. Gutta percha is from a tree. Now it was used extensively in Victorian times in mourning jewelry because it's black, obviously. <laughs> Of course, Victorians were very big on symbolism. Now, if we could figure out what the symbolism is, I guess we could determine whether or not this is a mourning picture. I mean, I certainly hope it isn't because there's a little girl in here. I believe bees maybe uh, represented strength. I don't know. What is that? Wheat, a, a rake? I'm not sure. I, I really just don't don't know. I need to do some further research. It's kind of tough to do on the road. But anyway, this is a very, very lovely little piece, isn't it? And there's a very pretty little little girl in here. This is a little hand-tinted tin type. I believe that's a tin type. Now, this will be most certainly gilt or maybe gold-filled. So I would be able to take this apart. I don't want to do it now if I don't have all my you know stuff with me just so I don't break it. But my understanding of gutta percha is it did come from a tree, like I said, and it is considered a very early thermoplastic. And it's been used, I think, since the 1600s or something like that, but really more widely used starting in the 1800s, maybe the 1840s or the 1850s. Now, it did get superseded when Leo Bakeland came out with Bakelite in the early 1900s, but this had a lot of great uses. I think it's still maybe used in dentistry. So gutta percha is kind of an interesting thing. And I think this is a, a really just lovely, oh, lovely little picture. Look at her. Yeah, we're just going to hope this isn't a morning piece, but we're going to try to figure out what that symbolism is. If anybody knows, please tell me what a beautifully ornate frame this is. It's got a little bit of damage, right? Not perfect. But when I average everything out that I bought, I think things were like $2 and change each, you know, including that Trafari pin. So... This was a really great deal and a, a quite lovely, lovely little item. So I had to open it up. I couldn't resist. So now that I take a look at this, maybe that is copper. What do you think? Probably just copper, right? Or an alloy, copper alloy. Now, this is saying it's a daguerreotype case, but I don't think this is a dag. Daguerreotypes, when you turn them, you can usually tell... I think that's a hand-tinted tin type, but I'm no expert on old photographs, that's for sure, but I do love them. So let's take a look in here. Littlefield Parsons & Co., manufacturers of daguerreotype cases. LP & Co. are the sole proprietors and only legal manufacturers of union cases. 
with the embrace embracing riveted hinge patented in 19, uh, 1856 and 1857. Well, that helps us date this and that is, is just awesome. So very, very pretty little collectible piece. I'm really happy I have it. Sweet. All right, let's move on. I bought this thing. I love selling police things. Police and fire stuff sell really, really well. Here is something very cool. Police headquarters, 1929, wow, West Hartford. So this is a little thing from Connecticut. And here's a, I think that's Whitehead Head and Hogue, right? Yeah. So this is a, a name brand that's on a lot of old pieces like this. This one I just bought as a moneymaker. That's it. And somebody I think is really going to love to get this. I bet you the police headquarters in West Hartford is not still in that building. Well, it may be. I don't know. Very cool item. No idea what it's going to sell for. I didn't really look it up. And here's a lighter. You know, uh, lighters sometimes can sell for me. So I picked this up. I think this is very cool. And this is clearly brass. Now, this inside part is new. I don't think that goes with it. Oh, it might. Gosh, I don't know. But I thought this was kind of interesting and awesome. And I thought maybe I could sell this for a profit. Is that Ganesh? Ganesh? Mm, I get confused. I can, yeah, I don't remember. <laughs> I don't know. What I know is it's it's very, very beautiful. So I was hoping maybe this would sell for a little something. Same with this pen. <laughs> I'm kind of on a pen kick now. I keep finding pens. It's not cross or anything, but I don't know. I thought it was kind of an interesting item. So I picked that up just to make money on. And what else did I get from him? This is a very nice tie clip. I think people also call these tie clasps too, right? Cool item. Not gold, gold filled. There it is, 1 20th, 12 karat gold filled. Kind of pretty though, right? Then I got these sweater clips. These are probably from the 1950s. And, oh no, don't start, focus. So uh, I think everybody knows what you do with these, right? You put these on each side of your sweater instead of buttoning it, button, buttoning all the buttons, and this chain hangs down. I thought this was in really nice condition. I have a bunch of other sweater clips, so I figured I'd just lock them together and put them up. And then I got this. Let's see if we can figure out what this is. Oops. It will help if I put it the right way. <laughs> That's creepy. Right? Do you remember him? Who remembers him? I, I do. Look, and then you get this sort of chubby ghost right here. And then there he is, Casper. How much did you love Casper? It is marked on the back. I think it's Harvey Productions. I think that's correct. And then this other one. Now, as I remember, he was nice, right? I mean, of course he was nice, that I remember, but these three were mean, I think, and they'd be trying to scare everybody. Is that correct, or were they his friends? No, I don't think they were his friends, right? That's why Casper was the outcast, I think. But what a, what a really sweet little charm bracelet this is. These are like rubber. I think this might be, you know, old. I don't think this is one. I thought I saw one on eBay that somebody said was from the 90s. I mean, maybe... I don't think so, though. I think this is the real deal from the 50s or 60s. It looks it to me, but yeah, could be wrong. I will double check. And okay, so that was it. Oh, I got this too. This is some sort of a World War II item. This is, uh, I looked it up, Am Amcraft, I think it says. That's the only reason I know that's because I looked it up. And I don't, it's no problem that it's missing this back part. Oops. But that is some sort of a, Hmm, it's a pin for something I can't remember now, but that is World War II. So all that was 25, but this one, clearly, clearly the star of the show. And it's in really beautiful, beautiful condition. I would say near mint, really. So it's very exciting. Very, oh, I know what I got. I did get one, one more thing I'll show you quickly. Um, so I think I know what these are. Do I know what these are? Are these for your hair? Why can't I remember what these are. I think I'm supposed to know this. I don't think they're lingerie things, right? Well, somebody tell me because I know you guys know what these are. So WAC stands for Women's Army Corps. And these say 
CWAC. So CWAC is Canadian Women's Army Corps. So I bought these to sell. I thought somebody might enjoy having these. It's nice to have the pair, right? I just can't remember. I really think, I'm not kidding. I think I know what these are. Anyway, yeah, don't know. My brain, my brain's kind of a, uh, <laughs> ain't what it used to be, <laughs> if you know what I mean. All right, let's move on to another place. And uh, let me just clean this stuff up real quick. Hold on. So then I was in a little antique shop and they had a bunch of jewelry. And I said to the guy, do you have any more jewelry or just what's out? And he said, you know, my mother just get hold on. Let me go to my car. So he brought out some more stuff for me. And it was um, virgin jewelry, as I like to call it, because I was the first one to look at it. Nobody else had ever seen it. So this was one thing that I picked out of that box from his mom. This is an Egyptian falcon. It's also called Horus. Now, he said to me, yeah, that's just like cheap enameling, you know, but we can all see that's inlaid, right? Kind of an interesting bracelet. I think it's well made. And just press down. I didn't see a mark on it. Now, my feeling is that, well, it's not sterling, I don't think, but I do think it, it may have some... Uh, some silver in it. I mean, maybe it doesn't. I don't know. But I would think this is probably 800. Uh, I'll have to check, you know, to see uh, what I see on this one. I didn't just break that. Did I just bend that? Yeah, I did. Wow, that was not good. All right, I'm going to fix that later. Anyway, I think this is a very cool thing. Egyptian stuff. People really like wearing Egyptian jewelry a lot. I know I do. And I thought that that was uh, pretty well done and, and pretty nicely made. So I got that. And then I got this. I do like selling this sort of stuff. Uh, Kinney, Providence, Rhode Island. There's probably a school name on there or something. I should have brought my loop, but I don't have it. I'm so sorry. But this is a necklace. And um, whose was it? Military Weekend, 1957. Ooh, I like that. I just don't know what that is. Uh, let's see if I can read it. Something college. Yeah, I don't know. Anyway. I like that this is new in its box, and I just bought this to sell. And, oh, another one that's 14 karat gold plated, huh? Mother of Pearl. So that was kind of a cool pickup, I thought. And then I grabbed this just because it looked older, and I thought it looked really pretty. Not real, you know, not super valuable, but I don't know. I was really attracted to it. I thought it was really very nice. So I got that. Then he had this thing. Look at this hummingbird. Isn't that nice? So these are not marcasites or stones. It's like when they do that fake thing, right? They're just the, the metal, in this case, sterling. I know it is marked sterling somewhere. There it is. I think it's down here, right? Kind of working with crap lighting here today. <laughs> no loop. Anyway, I thought that was really uh, just a sweet little thing. I don't know. I like it. I like it. And then I picked this out. This is a tatting shuttle. I know my sister used to tat, and my grandmother was a tatter also. And I think it's a very intricate thing and a very difficult thing, and you can make beautiful little doilies and things. And I know people collect tatting shuttles, so I didn't know. Yeah, I didn't know, so I just grabbed it out of the box. I don't know. It might be worth something. It might not be. And if I see little sterling items like this, I'm just always going to pick them up if the price is right. It's a little sterling silver bracelet. But, you know, you can lot these up and sell them for a little something. So I got that. And then I got this kind of a coarsely made piece, right? Clearly not real silver. My gosh, you could tell that. Sort of these tumbled stones here, cabochon kind of thing. I kind of like it, though. It actually looks really good on me, too. And there's the, the clasp right there. There's that kind of thing. I like it. It needs to be cleaned up a little bit. But this is just clearly some sort of a metal that isn't a precious metal, that's for sure. But I don't know. I really like this sort of flower motif. So I thought that was pretty. And then I got this because it's glass and it's old. And I think this pink glass is beautiful. Isn't that nice? And this is uh, brass, clearly. That was a very pretty little necklace, I thought, so I grabbed that out. And then I just got these <laughs> to wear, you know? Just little beaded 
little beaded earrings in beautiful condition. So all of that was 25, but I really, really like, well, that this to sell, that should get me my 25, wouldn't you think? I would think so. And then um, this is just really fantastic. Okay, so let's move on to another thrift store. Now, I saw this, and so this is an employee rewards item. These are usually 10 karat gold in my experience, but you can see the rookie mistake that was made here. Uh, this was not $2. This was 4 She hit me for 4 on this one. I don't know why, because I don't think they knew it was gold. So here's a rookie mistake. They look here, and they say, oh, it's gold-filled. Mm, it's gold-filled. Yeah, that's nothing. Not realizing, of course that these have to be looked at separately. CTO, that's what these items usually say. That's the name, uh, you know, the name of the company who made it. And there's our little 10 carat. So this will probably sell for a little something, something. I don't know who Colbro is, but I, I'm certainly going to find out. Now it's possible that it did originally come with this, this back, uh, but this is the only part that's, that's gold and they did not realize that, but I know it, and now if you didn't know it, you know it too. So this one was four, which I thought was a really good deal. So I got this old thing. Look at this. Isn't that cool? That's a chief, apparently. This is really awesome. Look at the height on that. It is signed uh, Peru, right? Yeah. So, and look how nice this is. This is always so nice when you have a pin and a pendant. But when it's hinged like this, and I don't think this is 925, is it? Oh, yeah, I guess it is. Okay, 925. And I think this is very special. I just love all the, the detailing in this. Isn't that nice? Look at the bricks. Pretty cool. Now, at this, this was uh, $1. And at the same place, sitting right next to it, was this llama. So this looks like this has some nice age on it. So you can tell, I'll just show you the difference. You can tell by the color that one is 925 and one is not. They are both silver, but one has more silver content than the other in this case, it is this one. But this one is 800, I think, or 900, is it? Coin silver, let me see. Uh, yeah, I think I had a hard time reading that, um, but we're gonna test this and find out what it is. Very nice though. Um, oh, that's kind of trapped in there. I'll, I'll fix that when I get home. But I thought that one was very uh, cool. I've never seen anything like that. I have never seen, I don't know if I've ever seen llama jewelry before, but I thought that was nice. And then I got this. I was just going to wear this because I, I kind of dig it. I don't know. I don't generally like necklaces on cords, but this one I really like. So I got this one just because I think it's really blingy and really cool. And of course, I always love that, you know, I could take it off and put it on any necklace I want. So that was just kind of a fun little piece to keep. Do you like it? I really do, actually. I think it's different. Not real or anything like that, obviously. <laughs> I wish. Don't we wish that diamond was real, right? I would buy everybody dinner. And then I got this necklace. So the first thing I thought when I saw this in the thrift store was how pretty it is and, and how uh, it's just in really nice condition. You could sort of see that from a mile away. And then I noticed that it's new with a tag and it is a Trina Turk. So uh, it was $2, as you can see. And what's interesting about this is it says first sample. Now, I did get this in the New York City area. So I wonder if that's where the company is, you know, and this was just a sample and maybe they never even put this on the market. I don't know. Who knows? But I think this is pretty cool and pretty interesting and in really, really great condition. So I will look further into this, but if it doesn't sell for anything, I would actually wear this one too. I really like the combinations of colors here. I really like the pink and then the sort of faux opal thing and the the purple and the, the orange together. Isn't that interesting? The green. Nice long one too. And there's what the little thingy is. So that must be, yeah, that's the Trina Turk thing. So if we ever see that again, we will know. Yeah, this is my second piece of Trina Turk. I think the first piece was a ring and I think I sold it for more than $100 if memory serves correctly. Now I got this one, I think this one was $2 also. This came from the same place. This one looks new too. Sorry, it's got a whole problem going on here. Oh, 
Okay, I just laid it down because it looked much better like this, doesn't it? So this is a beautiful, beautiful necklace. Look, it looks like it's fit for royalty, right? Completely costume. And I don't know who this is. Maybe somebody knows because I do not. Who is this? Who are you? What even is that? Is that, it looks like a, is that a guy laying on a donkey or something? Hmm, who are you? If anybody knows, let me know. It's hard to make out what it is actually, even with the loop, I can't do it. So I got that one. And then this made my, my heart skip a few beats. <laughs> uh, it's not real, <laughs> but I, I, I thought it was, but I don't, I don't think it is, but boy, oh boy, look at this. Yeah, who doesn't love Cartier? I do. Um, and it is stainless, and it's a very good copy. Now, the reason that I don't think it's real is because, first of all, it works great. Look at it working. Uh, see how it says Swiss down there, right here? I think real Cartier has uh, the word Swiss made. So I think that's our tip off here that this is not real. I was gonna try to take the back off, but I don't know if these things are fake or if every one of those has to, I didn't really wanna mess with it, you know, just in, in case it was, but eh, I'm pretty sure it isn't. That would have been good though, right? <laughs> this was $5 in the thrift store, so I just figured, yeah, I'll, I'll take a chance on this one too. And we just have one more little, oh wait, we have this and then we have one more haul left, hold on. So I saw this at um, Goodwill. Novelty wristwatches. How cute are these little things? Look. So these are for little kids. You can see they're damaged, but I still think they're cute. I don't know. I'm going to take them out in a minute. But look, the whole thing was $4.99. And then I had a, a thing for 25% off. So let me take them out of here. Hold on. Look, aren't these kind of cute? I mean, even with the damage, I still think they're kind of cool. I don't know what I would do with them. I'll probably just sell them as is, but I don't know. Would these look cool on like a charm bracelet or something? Does it, you think that damage really makes them look terrible or, or just really older and cool? I wasn't sure, but I thought for $5, I don't know. I just thought they were kind of, kind of neat, especially the fact that they're on their original like thing, you know, their thing from the store. Wow, these are really in bad bad shape. <laughs> so this little cloth part here, I guess a little girl would just put that around their wrist. I guess these were party favors or something in the day, huh? Really cute. Uh, yeah, couldn't resist them. Could not resist them. I know it's it's very hard finding Goodwills that have jewelry, and, and the one that I like to go to doesn't either too much, just a little tiny bit. They used to have great stuff. But now I think they sell it all online, right, on their goodwill.com. So then there's a thrift store I like to go to. They had a buy one, get two free sale. So I think I paid, I don't know what I paid, $5 or $4 for everything. So the first thing is this. So I thought that maybe this was yet another rookie mistake that, that I've seen happen, that somebody who works in the back takes a look at this chain sees that it says, you know, Korea or whatever, it's not real, and then just makes the assumption that this isn't real either. So that is a mistake that we know about. So we try to benefit from it if we can. <laughs> but um, when I looked at this, I do not think this is a gold star of David, but it, you know, it, it could have been, let me put it that way. <laughs> a lot of times there's a mark inside the bale. I yeah, I don't think so. Anyway, I will, you know, I'll look further and test it and everything, but I don't think it was, but um, or I don't think it is gold, but I thought it was worth taking a chance. Look at this sweet little thing. This is like a hammered silver. That's a cute little bracelet. And this one is marked somewhere or other. This looks very 1970s to me. That's sweet. I thought that was a cute little thing. And then I got this because it's in beautiful condition, and this is a Napier. So this one would look fantastic on something. Let me try to lay it out. Isn't that beautiful? Whoa. My lighting is making this look a funky color, but it's really a very, very beautiful, luscious gold here. And we'll take a look at the mark. There it is. 
Napier. It's probably from the 60s, huh? Maybe from the 50s. It sure is in great condition, I'll tell you that much. So I picked that out. I don't know what that says. I can see Napier, but oh, patent pending maybe? Hmm. I just love this. I love the way it feels. I love the way it lays. Very cool. And then I got this little stick pin. I have another one of these too. It's a little bit tangled, but it opens like this. <laughs> kind of cool, right? And it has a little lucky uh, four-leaf clover thing. I don't know. I just thought it was cute. This is likely uh, gold-filled. Maybe not. I think so, though. I thought that was kind of a, just a, a cute item. I guess you could wear this on your lapel or your tie or whatever. So that was cute. Oops. And I just have a couple more things. I got this there. Now, stones aren't my thing, you know, but I thought this was beautiful. Look how beautiful nature is. Look at all that. All the, the design and striations, just beautiful. And so what I liked about it is this little finding is sterling. Right? So I thought maybe that might have a little bit of resale value. It is really very, very pretty. Let's see if I can lay it out a little bit better. Yeah. So it's one, it's a five strand. Isn't that pretty? I really think it is. So I got that. And then I also picked out this little belt. Look how skinny this is. Well, this is clearly from the 1970s. It's like the skinniest belt I've ever seen. And I've seen this before. Who is that? Somebody's going to know who R is. Just like the skinniest belt I've ever seen in, in life. I think that's a pretty cool belt. <laughs> I guess it's very disco, right? Yeah, I love it. It's like a metallic uh, silver with these rhinestones. My camera is not making this look very, very good, but it, it is kind of pretty. And uh, like I said, I didn't pay much money for any of this stuff. Probably less than a dollar per, you know. So I thought this was pretty too. Black enamel ribbon. Not signed, huh? I guess not. Very pretty though. And that's it. I just got one more thing. I picked this out because I just thought it was different. It's wood. And that is, um, wow, my brain's really gone. Who is this again? Sagittarius? No. Yeah, I can't remember. I can't remember what this is, <laughs> but this is a Zodiac thing. And I thought it was pretty cool. I don't know. It might be from the 70s. It might not be. It might be brand new. Anyhow, that is all I have for today. Stay tuned. I will have some more stuff. And also, you know what we need to do? We totally need to do another jewelry trivia game because we haven't done that in a super long time. And that was really, really fun. And the best thing is it's live. And that's really fun because I get to talk to you guys. All right. Maybe I'll take one of these hauls too and do a live one and we can chit chat a little bit too because I just think I have a lot of really great viewers and I appreciate all the wonderful emails I get and messages and everything else. So very, very much appreciative of everybody. Leave me a comment below. Let me know what your favorite piece was, and I hope to catch you soon. Hugs and kisses. See you soon, okay?